Sadly, here we go again. Michigan is facing another budget deficit, and the Senate majority wants to balance it on the backs of the state's hardworking public employees instead of making concessions themselves. Every time state government is in crisis, the leadership of this body asks our state employees to make more sacrifices when they've made none. And today is another example of this hypocrisy. From fiscal year 2004 to fiscal year 2011, state employees have made concessions that have resulted in $700 million of savings to our state. They have taken unpaid furlough days, given up earned leave time, paid higher premium shares for their health insurance, and have increased co-pays and lost overtime. Have you done any of those things? No. And all of this was for the good of the state. Framing this as a raise is ridiculous and partisan spin. The so-called pay increase of 3% is not really a raise at all. It was adopted in exchange for agreed-upon reductions in benefits that amount to 4.35% cut, a cut in total compensation. And while the concessions these employees have made can't be touched or undone, Senate majority is trying to renege on our, our end of the bargain. Our state employees have and continue to act in good faith, but today the legislature is not doing the same. These employees are vital to providing the services that Michigan residents rely on every day to survive. These are the men and women in Child Protective Services who help keep kids safe. They're the people in the Department of Human Services that make sure families and seniors have the assistance they need to put food on their table. Do any of you worry about how you're going to put food on your table? And these are the police officers and firefighters that help keep our communities safe. Let me tell you something. Child abuse does not take a furlough day. Hunger does not take a furlough day. Crime does not take a furlough day. Then why should we ask the people who combat these challenges to take furlough days? These men and women do not look at their jobs as just another paycheck. And in turn, state government should not be looking at them like just another price tag. These certainly aren't non-essential services, and they're surely as important to the people in your districts as they are to the people in mine. When there's a constituent concern, who does your staff pick up the phone and call? What if there was no one on the other line of that phone? No one to solve that problem, no one to help that person. Are these really the services we want to target to realize cost savings in state government? If these drastic times call for drastic measures, then why not make them yourselves? It's the height of hypocrisy when the majority wants to cut state employees to save $48 million, but not willing to cut their own lifetime health care benefits or reduce the drastic disparity in partisan office budgets. Also ironic, the spokesperson for one of the groups who is a chief proponent of state employee cuts was once one of, if not the highest paid state employee in Michigan history. And now he wants cuts from all the other state employees. I am proud to represent the majority of Michigan's hardworking, dedicated state employees. But more importantly, I'm proud to have them represent me and represent our state. I will not support reforms at their expense, and I'm ashamed that more people in this body don't value our public employees the same way. I abhor the politics of fear, but when we take measures like this, it's only a matter of time before someone falls through the cracks and has a devastating story in Michigan, and we can't afford to let that happen. And because of that, I'm going to be voting no, and I ask that my comments be printed in the journal as my no-vote explanation.